Youth agitation in Nigeria, what the government can do, my vision from 2017. In the part one of this video, I had shared a vision I uh, saw about killings in the streets of Nigeria and I uh, came up with suggestions on what we needed to do to stop it. We are very close to something happening that can become a problem for every one of us. Look at how we sat at home, coronavirus, and then during the last NSAS protest and all of that. But something worse is on the way. And the reason I know is what I've been seeing. And lately I just found a video of a prophecy I gave in 2017. Three years ago, I gave a prophecy, 2017. And I want you to listen. We'll pray for Nigeria. Because I see in the spirit, I was taken in the spirit to see a group rising, a youth group. And then I saw funding being organized for this group. I saw this group become a, a strong movement that will begin to move against the government. So what I'm still asking God is, is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Because I saw them doing strong rallies strong rallies there is going to begin from campus people and then some other people and then it's going to spread and it's going to become strong and i saw them organizing the funding system there was going to be a robust funding system for this thing and it's going to be a strong movement that will rally that will campaign i don't know where this is going and i saw the government make a good strategy that helped a bit what is this strategy i saw the government releasing a billion naira to become a soft loan for dependents, like students, like housewives, dependents. And I saw that this calmed the fire of this movement a bit, though it did not stop it. So the government will be needing to do some things like this. But this thing is, is, cooking, is cooking secretly. But I was taken to see it in the spirit. And I saw their meeting, I was in the meeting. God. Let's pray. Stretch your hands. Yes, Lord. Father, Lord, bring the change that this country needs. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. That is 2017. Then there was no protest. There was nothing. So it's not even about what we are talking about now. God has talked about this for a long time. A group that will be funded. And it is underground, but it's coming back. But when it comes back and the government uses the wrong approach, it will be hell. Because now they have taught the youth a lesson. That okay, so when I protest, you will seize my bank account. Okay, when I protest, you can take my pass. Oh, when I protest, you can shoot me. Huh? Let's go and re strategize. Don't think they have died. It's coming back. This time they will come back, they will have guns. So by the time you see gun here, gun here, and they need phones, and you know who lumps, and some kind of people will join these kind of things, or rough people will join, and then they will start looting people's houses. It will become like a war. So the government will be in trouble. That's where we are going to if we don't stop. Imagine the president comes out and makes a speech and says, I am cutting my salary by 60%. And we are cutting the salaries of all senators and all those in House of Rep, all of that by another 60%. And we are making it into a fund to cater for those who cannot pay fees, those who cannot take care of this or that, or we move it into the education fund to solve ASU's problem. What do you think will happen? Some people were, who are thinking of risking their life, going out to protest, will just calm down. Strategy. A war is not won by might, but by strategy. So the strategy I share is not everything the government can do is just to give an idea of what the government can begin to do set up systems to answer the people and reduce benefits for government officials especially those in the highest offices and let this money go to helping people in the lowest place people are suffering the price of things are skyrocketing and there's complaints on the street this is dangerous this is a time bomb we need to do something I want to show you one very important scripture. First Kings chapter 12 from verse 1 to 19. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt 
in Egypt that they sent and called him and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spoke unto Jeroboam saying thy father made our yoke grievous now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will save thee this is protest your father stressed us real reduce the stress so we can save you and he said to them depart for three days come again and the people what departed he said give me three days to think about your requests all right and come back after three days look at how to deal with an issue he didn't shoot at them he didn't call them stupid he said give me three days and king Rehoboam consulted with the old men experience is important and king Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said how do ye advise that I answer these people and they spoke to him saying if thou will be a servant to these people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them so look at three things you need to do number one serve them number two answer them number three speak good words to them pastors we are not just here trying to gather money we are the council bank of a nation we are a council bank because we have the word of God that is richer than anything else look at the answer to answers look at the answer to everything it's right in your bible if thou will serve these people one answer them two so you need to select the words deliberately words answer them speak good words to them then they will be thy servants forever but he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him he consulted with young men that had grown up with him and which stood before him so he had the counsel from the old men he said no please old men is not about age some people can be old sometimes i'm not even have the right counsel it's about experience in their discourse he forsook the counsel of the old men which, are, which was given to him. He consulted with young men that grew up with him and which stood before him. Uh -huh. And he said to them, What counsel give ye that we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake to him, saying, Thus shalt thou say to these people that spake to thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us thus shalt thou say unto them my little finger shall be thicker than my father's noise and now whereas my father did lay you with heavy yoke i will add to your yoke my father has chasing you with whips but i will chasing you with scorpion young men so jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed saying come to me again the third day so there were two counsel one said serve the people answer them speak good words to them the other one says tell them that my father used whip for you me i'm using scorpion say even my finger will be heavier than my father's noise <laughs> say this is the way to make them serve you threaten them shoot at them they will not come out again <laughs> you made a mistake somebody told me how does when you when two or three people die they worry about the body you take away the body Others we see, they will fear, they will never come out again. You lie. You lie. Hey, 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 hey. You lie. They are coming out now ready for you since they know what you will do. You have done your worst. Foolish counsel. Today, look at how everything was destroyed in this city. Worse is coming. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, I will add to your yoke. Imagine people came to protest and you told them to come back in three days. And this is what you are telling them. My father chastised you with whips, I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearken not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah this Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat the prophet prophesied that your kingdom will be taken from you so so that it will happen council has left you you will never hear good advice again because there is a there is a purpose against you that's what Satan does when he wants to destroy you the same thing you will never hear good advice so when all Israel saw 
that the king had king not unto them. The people answered the king. They, they were not afraid. The king thought when you say that, they will say, hey, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. So, no, they answered the king. What was their answer? Oh. Saying, what portion have we in David? What consigns us and David? Neither have we inheritance in the sons of Jesse. To your tent, O Israel. Now see to thy own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. They said, we, have, we don't want you again. You are fired. The people fired the king. The king never knew that could happen. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the city of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. So there were 12 tribes. Only one tribe stayed with him. 11 tribes left. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tributes. And all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Stone. Stone, no, not gone. Stone. He said, you think you can come here with your soldiers? They took stones. They stoned the head of tributes. In their time, this will be head of CBN. All right? And he what? Died. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot and flee. So the president ran. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. This is what cost it. Not answering the people correctly. I shared with the congregation of our church about the importance of wise counsel for those in authority. And I want you to take a listen as I shared with the congregation. The counsel you follow determines whether good or evil will happen to you. When the devil wants to destroy you, he will keep you away from good counsel. Proverbs 29 verse 12. And that's what's happening to our country. If a ruler hacking to lies, all his servants are what? Wicked. That's scripture. When a king is surrounded by wicked people, they will give him what? Lies. Let me show you more. Proverbs 11 14. Where no counsel is, what happens? Look at Proverbs 20, 18. Look at what it says. Every purpose is established by what? Counsel. Every purpose that you have in your mind, you need what? Counsel, which is what? Good advice. And that's what is missing, and that's what we need to pray for. I'm showing you this for a reason. So we're going to pray, and I want you to start praying that wise counselors will be raised for our leaders, that they may listen to the people just like what we have seen. So let us spread this word. Let us share with those in authority and let us also pray that God will touch the heart of our leaders and touch the heart of our people that will remain one strong Nigeria in the name of Jesus Christ.